And good morning, Dorbush Download number 88. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Two Andrew. Fat ladies, 88. Mm -hmm. I never played bingo, so I don't, I don't get that. But anyway, no, I'm more worried about the legs eleven. I'm more worried about the nervous nineties. You know, like yes, you know, I get yeah. to ninety nine and yeah. No, we had eighty seven the other week when the batsmen get out, oh, so we're right. Yeah. We've passed the bad number off yeah. and running. Yeah, well, what's um, <laughs> one one one? Isn't one 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 a bad one as well? Yeah, six six six. Anyway, we might actually talk finance. Andrew Dan Dorbush Partners. Good morning. What is going on at the moment, Dan? Like, share market was Unbelievable. It isn't? is. So, you know, here we are a month ago crying into our beer, for those who drink beer. Uh, I don't drink at all. I'm not a Chardonnay set person. But, you know, like, we're sort of going, the share market's horrible. And in the space of four or five weeks, it's just gone gangbusters. We're at 2016 highs. What's going yeah. on, Dan? Those low rates, I think, really sum it up. I interest think, rates? Yep. The fact that the RBA dropped the interest rates, um, that's... Really put, um, it makes money, the cost of money cheaper for the banks, doesn't it? So the banks are getting a fair bit of support. And if you have a look at that index compared to, say, the materials index, it's really the, the financials, financials that are dragging us along. So. And in fact, the financials index, which Brendan will prepare the chart for, shows that it's actually starting, it was sort of, you know, had a big fall and it was just going sideways and it's now starting to get a little bit of head of steam up because at its worst, banks were off about 27% for the year. Yeah. And, you know, I know we, you guys spoke last week about bank profit reporting. We won't go through that again. But one of the main reasons the share market is at, you know, the highs it is at is because of that strength in banks. So the question yep. I just put to you beforehand is, would you be buying banks today? Um, no, that's tough, Andrew. I, you know, we, we found that report about sell in May and go away, didn't we? So that, you know, on the back of that, I probably wouldn't be. Um, and interestingly enough, I've got that report with me. Here's one I prefer to hear. <laughs> but um, and what it does show us is, even though May comes off, there's statistically a good chance that June's going to follow through with that. Mm -hmm. As so in June is also bad? It's also going to fall away. Um, so, you know, if you're going to buy banks now for that dividend, and there's really only two now, isn't there, NAB and Westpac? Um, have to buy Westpac today? Are they X tomorrow, I think? I, I'm pretty sure. Brendan will look into that whilst we're talking. Thank um, you, Brendan. So, you know, if you're going to buy for dividend now, you'd have to be comfortable considering the fact that they could well sell off in May and June. So, yeah. you know, on face value, probably not. And they've, and they've run pretty hard. I mean, ANZ have, have cut hard. their dividend fairly substantially. Yes. And yet they've stuck on 10%. Yeah, well, Go they figure. put on 5% the day they cut it. Didn't Go they? figure. So, I mean, wouldn't you think yeah. that if you're cutting the dividend? But, you know, I think what the market is actually saying to us is that Westpac with an 80% dividend payout ratio is too high. And NAB is equally so that ANZ have taken their medicine and they're going to have to, uh, and are winding back their Asian business. And, you know, banks are under immense pressure at the moment from governments around uh, need for capital adequacy. If the Labor Party get in after the 2nd July, we've got concerns around that Royal Commission, well, the market has concerns around that Royal Commission. Yep. You know, there's plenty of pressure on them at the moment. So and there's still that underlying doubtful debt positions that, you know, that was a big issue, wasn't it, three weeks ago? But again, coming back full circle, one of the reasons I think banks are rallying is because as interest rates are coming down, the mums and the dads, which haven't gone bad so far, it is less likely they'll go bad, less chance of the housing That's market the falling in a heap. But you're right, bad and doubtful debts, I mean, we've had Dick Smith go bad. We've had Arium go bad. There's been a number of them, and Combank came out early in the week and had like a 40% increase in bad mm. and doubtful debts because of their exposure to those companies. So my view yep. on banks, if you're underweight banks, I'd probably have a look at buying a few. But if you're market weight banks, and market weight banks is 40%, if your portfolio is 40% or more of banks, I'd probably be saying Good enough time is to enough. Take some profits. Maybe even take yeah. some profits. If you're under 40% or you're just starting, come and have a chat to us case by case. Um, what else? I think that's about it. That's about it. It's pretty, pretty like as we said, it's all sort of ticking along pretty quickly this week. I'll probably the I, think the big, I think the big area, Andrew, is if that ASX 200 gets that 5,500 area. That was going to be my point exactly. Yeah. 5,500, you know, I'd be, because what are we, 5,370 something? As we're waiting for Brendan to confirm that Westpac dividend. Uh, if it was 53... <laughs> no so, pressure, no Brendan. Pressure though, Brendan. Uh, if it was... Uh, so I'm basically six on another 2%. You know, if you'd been buying in sort of the low 5,000s from an index point of view, if you're up 5 or 10%, you know, you'd probably be saying, look... Um, and, and considering statistically it comes off now, 
you know, second week of May, um, Friday the 13th could be the day too. Um, and then, and as we've seen the last four years, you know, sells off in June as well. So. And the other thing is around that election campaign as well, you know, because that will create a little bit of uncertainty there. Um, media stocks will do well because, you know... You're well, the... I'd be inclined to sell media stocks because everybody will be turned off to get away from the ads, <laughs> won't they? You know? uh, watching Netflix or Stan or whatever the case may be. Uh, probably the only other thing very briefly is the um, IPO that we're involved with with WAM leaders, that finishes up this week. So yep. they were hoping to raise around um, 160 million. They just broke through 300 million yesterday. So the demand for it has been uh, pretty strong. Um, and as a consequence, if you're interested in WAM, that's great. Thank you, Brendan. Uh, if we're, uh, if you're interested in WAM leaders, then certainly today, well, tomorrow when you're viewing this, need to have a chat yep. to us because that the offer is now closed. Uh, we've got a pretty good relationship with the underwriter and they've said we might be able to sneak a couple in there. But certainly the demand from our clients mm, has been pretty amazing. good. Good fund manager. Anyways. Well, as we said, without labouring the point, we've been involved with them since 1999. They've got three other funds that perform really well. so And they're doing something which is a little bit different to Glennon as an example. Glennon's yep. doing top two, well, 200 below. Yep. These guys are doing 200 above, but again, focusing on those smaller companies. So certainly uh, have a bit of a chat to us about that. So, you know, if we're looking at ex dividend dates for the banks, uh, you have to buy Westpac by today. So if you're viewing this, it might be too late by tomorrow. Uh, but bear in mind, the share price will be a little bit weaker. So the last bank uh, to go ex dividend is National Bank. So you'll need to buy that by next Monday. Otherwise, again, you'll, uh, you'll miss out. So uh, certainly those two look interesting too. Otherwise, till next week. Thank you. Thanks.